But the first thing I need to do is lay out the size of the charcuterie board and the general design. So I took some crackers and some cheese and sort of laid them out roughly where I think they would be to give me the rough size of the body. I chose a brontosaurus because I think it'd be a good shape because the body can be large to hold a fair amount of cheese and crackers and meat. And also you can kind of use the head as a handle. So I show this to my wife. She thought it was too big, so I'm gonna scale it back just a little bit. There he is, I love it. I decided to sketch sort of a general square around this thing so I could figure out exactly how big of a board I'd have to make to cut this shape out. The pieces are gonna be traveling sort of diagonal across the dinosaur like this. So I think it'll kind of give a nice look and then also add a lot of strength to the handle by being nearly a continuous piece going up into his head. One thing I noticed before I got started here was that this walnut does not have a straight edge on it yet. So I'm gonna do the trick with the CA glue and masking tape with a straight edge glued to it so you guys can see it if you haven't already seen it. Ordinarily, I'd try to use a little bit of accelerator on the CA glue to make it dry faster, but I wanted to give it a little bit more time to set so I could get this edge just right, because you want the straight board to hang just a little bit over the rough edge. I think I got it here, and it's gonna be clamped for a couple of minutes, then we'll be ready to go. So let's go over the table saw now and rip down some pieces to one inch. All right, so I see that my wood that I cut is covering all of the dinosaur. So I'm gonna go ahead and just mark a few lines on here as reference to use when I do the glue up to make sure that getting the boards exactly in this place. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut out my dinosaur stencil with a razor blade. Now I'm going to lay out all my pieces one more time just to make absolutely certain that what I have will work. I hate to glue all this up and then find out I messed up. Looks good to me. All right, let's glue this thing up. Be sure you're using Tight Bond 3 as it's okay for contact with food. I accidentally flipped my pieces the wrong way, so I put glue on the other side of the first piece to fix it. Then I was so distracted, I forgot to spread the glue on the rest of the pieces. If you build this board, be sure to spread the glue before you clamp it up. Luckily, the glue squeezing evenly out of the cracks lets me know that I should be okay. With this odd shaped board, I wanted to get one clamp on it before transferring it to the pipe clamps to finish clamping it up. Due to the weird shape of this board, I kind of made a gigantic mess clamping this up, but that's okay. I can clean that up. I got cowls on it, and I'm going to let this sit overnight, and we'll get back to it.
it is a new day, so the glue is all dry. Let's unclamp this thing and see how we did. It's a good thing I used those cowls because the board actually turned out quite flat. So all I really need to do now is clean up some of this excess glue and send it through the planer. As you can see, I focus most of my glue scraping on just the bottom side because as it goes through the planer, I just need one flat side. And then I'll make this side flat with the planer blades and then flip it over and then make the other side perfectly flat. This turned out perfect. I could not be happier. So the next thing we need to do is transfer this stencil to the board so we can cut out the shape. I have this thing all clamped down and now I'm gonna cut it out with a jigsaw. So this is kind of awesome. In the midst of creating my Bronto board, I also accidentally created this tiny little dinosaur. He's gonna be my mascot for the rest of the build. <laughs> so overall it turned out pretty good, but when I was cutting the feet out, I had the blade set to oscillating cut. Uh, which is supposed to give you a faster cut. I didn't mean to have it set that way um, and it kind of screwed up the feet. So I'm gonna have to do a lot of filing and shaping to get the feet to look the way I want them to. <sighs> I know what you guys are thinking. Travis, why didn't you just use the right tool for the job? I don't have the right tools, so this is what I have, and this is how I do things. If I did have the right tool, it would probably be a scroll saw, but this just goes to show you you don't need the right tools to build something awesome. So the profile is looking pretty darn good. I've got it sanded up to 120, so I think it's a good point in the process to add the round over before we go any further with the sanding. Well, the round over turned out fantastic. Now I'm gonna go ahead and sand the whole thing with 220 grit before I water pop it. Water popping causes the grain of the wood to actually raise up so you can sand it smooth once it's dry. What this will do is allow the board to stay smooth over the life of the board even after washing. The board is all water pop now and feeling nice and rough. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the final sanding with some 220 grit sandpaper. It's now time for my favorite part and that is a little food grade mineral oil to finish off this board. I like to lay the oil on real heavy and then just let it soak in. My son's charcuterie board is officially done and I've loaded up some of his favorite snacks and now let's go surprise him with it. What do you think of that, buddy? It's so cool. What is it? Um, 
a dinosaur. It is. It's a brontosaurus. You going to eat some cheese? Yes. Enjoy, buddy. I'm glad you like it. Thank you for watching my entire video, guys. I really appreciate it. If you'd like to support my channel, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And check out one of these other awesome videos over here. We'll see you guys in the next one.